Hey everybody, happy Tuesday of Holy Week. I'm uh, excited to bring you the, our devotion for today. We're doing, each of us staff members, doing a devotion each day leading up to Easter. And uh, I'm going to cover Matthew 24 and 25, just two chapters in five minutes. Um, so actually, chapters 24 and 25 are Jesus' last message that he gave. It's called the Olivet Discourse because he, he gave this teaching to his disciples on the Mount of Olives. And it was, it was their last, his last message to them. And... Um, in, in at the beginning of chapter 24, Jesus mentions the destruction of the temple. And so the disciples asked him, they said, when, when is this going to happen? And what will be the, when are you going to come back? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? And this is that very famous passage where Jesus just begins to walk through all of the, we might call them the signs of the time. So he walks through, uh, he calls them birth pains, earthquakes, um, you know, natural disasters, wars and rumors of wars. He talks about famines and, uh, and pestilence. So we would, we would consider coronavirus some sort of pestilence maybe. And so he mentions those. And then he talks about believers experiencing persecution um, and all the pressure that will be on believers. There will be a, there will be a lot of deception. Um, there will be false messiahs, false Christ saying, I'm the one, follow me a lot of false teachers and so he warns them this is going to be a time of great deception and then he talks about this event that Daniel talks about and it's called the um, abomination of desolation it's this, it's it's what happens in the temple that really sets in motion um, the final three and a half years of the tribulation and so he talks about that and then he talks about how those in Jerusalem will flee to the mountains and it really builds up to uh, this. He, it's, it's in Matthew chapter 24, verse 29. It says, immediately after, after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And it says, at that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of earth will mourn. And then it talks about... He's going he's gonna to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. And so what, what you have is this big picture uh, view of, of what's going to happen. And if you said, well, where are we now? Um, most would agree we're, we're in, in the birth pains. And the birth pains have been happening really since Christ ascended into heaven. Uh, but, you know, it probably won't surprise us to see them increase in in frequency and intensity as things progress but then jesus goes so jesus gives these this prophecy about what's going to happen and then in chapter 25 he tells several parables it's all the same teaching he tells several parables that teach how we're to be ready and how we're to be watchful uh, in light of all of that and so you know there's a lot of different views about the chronology of how the end times are going to play out. And uh, I have my own views about that. In fact, we may do a series coming up where we talk more about that. But whatever your view is, a point of agreement for all of us is that Jesus was absolutely clear that we're to be ready. Uh, we're to be ready for persecution and we're to be ready for his return. We're to be ready for difficult times and we're to be ready for when we stand before the judge and give an account of our lives. And so that's the, that's the, the parables uh, uh, really lay out this, the necessity for being ready. And I wanna focus in on one particular parable. It's a parable of the 10 virgins. And I'm just gonna make a few quick points. It says, this is chapter 25, verse 1. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, uh, but they did not take any oil with them. And the wise, however, took oil in their jars along with their lamps. And the bridegroom was a long time in coming. And they became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out and meet him. And then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. 
Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, you should go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived and the virgins who were ready went out with him to the wedding banquet and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Sir, sir, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, I tell you the truth, I do not know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. And so there's, there's a lot of details in that parable, but the overarching message of it is there are some who will be ready for the last days and the return of the Lord, and there will be others who are not ready for the last days and the return of the Lord. And you can't borrow from someone else. You have to have it in you. And all through the scripture, oil is representative of the Holy Spirit and the life of a believer. And so you, no one can provide that, no one can give that to you. That's something that you have to get directly from the Lord. And we might also talk about the burning as a, as a passion and an intimacy uh, in our relationship with Christ. And there's nothing more important in, in, at any point in history, and especially in the last days, nothing is more important than a close, personal relationship with Jesus. Um, if you don't have that, you're not ready. And so I want to encourage you to cultivate that. And there's no better way to cultivate that you and the Lord but than opening up the scripture and reading on a regular daily basis. That's why we have the daily devotions uh, at Foundry. And uh, want to just encourage you to keep on reading and don't look to other people to feed you. Become a self-feeder and, and stir up within you uh, your, your passion for the Lord and your relationship for Him so that you'll be ready uh, for anything that comes and certainly the return of the Lord. So God bless you guys. Love you. Have a great day.